between an input and output. So what does that mean? Okay. For example, this would be a function. Okay. Typically, x is our input, y is our output. This would be a function because every x I put in, I double it and I get y. Okay? So my relationship here would be 2 times every x gives me a y. If y was 5, or sorry, if x was 5, y would be 10. If x was 20, y would be 40. This is the relationship. 2 times every x gives me a y. That's what we call a function. So there's an infinite amount of functions you could think of. There, there's a ton of them, right? That's just one example. Okay, that's the first definition I want to talk about. The next one is a coordinate plane. Coordinate plane. What a coordinate plane is, it's formed by the intersection of two number lines, one horizontal, one vertical. One horizontal and one vertical. That's what we graph on, right? A coordinate plane, two number lines, one horizontal, one vertical, and that's how we plot points, okay? We call this a coordinate plane or a coordinate system. And there's two parts of a coordinate plane. One is the x-axis and one is the y-axis. The x-axis is the horizontal number line of a coordinate plane. And the y-axis is the vertical number line of a coordinate plane. So remember, horizontal goes left to right, vertical goes up and down, right? The y-axis is the one that goes up and down, the x-axis is the one that goes across. Okay, we've probably seen those before, right? Okay. Let's look at what a coordinate plane looks like. I have these four, and I think I have like four others I want to talk about here, definitions. I know it's a lot of definitions in this chapter to start with, but we're going to use each of them today. It's an example of a coordinate plane. This would be the x-axis because it goes left to right. This would be the y-axis, right? We've seen that before. What about this point right here? What do we call that? Anybody know that? What do we call that point right there? There's a specific name for it. Anybody know that? This is called the origin. Okay. You don't, have to, you don't have to draw the graph. I just care about the definition of origin. Origin where the x and y axis intersect. Oh, thank you. And it's at the point zero, zero, right? See, we got the x axis that goes horizontal, the y axis that goes vertical. The origin is where they intersect at the point zero, zero. Okay. We remember origin. We heard that before at least maybe. Yeah, okay. So we want to have that one down. Order pair. Anybody got an example of one? No? Yeah, the two numbers that go on the graph. Yeah, exactly. It's the, it's the point on the graph, right? So like, that's an ordered pair. One, two. One on the x-axis, because the x always comes first. And the y, one, two is the plotted point. But it's a set of ordered pairs. So like, for example, that would be a relation. Right? It's just a whole set of points. Okay? A set of ordered pairs is a relation. We have the domain. It represents the x values. And the range represents the y values. So if I gave you a relation and said, give me, all, give me the domain of this relation, you would go through and you would list all the x values. If I gave you a graph and I said, what's the domain of this graph? you would find where it covers the x values, what all x values are possible. Same thing with the range. The way I remember it, D comes before R in the alphabet, right? X comes before Y in the alphabet. 
So if you ever mix them up, domain goes with the X's, range goes with the Y's. Okay? And the last two, or I got a couple more I want to talk about, is discrete function. Okay? So we talked about what a function was. Right? A function, I'll come back to this, so don't worry. It's a relationship between an input and an output. You put something in, you get something out. Right? So we have a specific type of function called disc discrete function. Okay. It is a graph whose points are not connected. A graph that consists of non-connected points. So it would be just like a graph if you just plot a bunch of points. right? That, we would call that a discrete function, maybe. We'll, we'll talk about function tests later, what, what constitute a function later. But a discrete function is a graph that just consists of all of these non-connected points. And then we have kind of the opposite of that, continuous function. Is a function connected by a line or a curve? A line or a curve. Okay. So we're going to, in a minute, we're going to be talking about all continuous functions, but then I'm going to show you some examples on your assignment of discrete functions. And you'll have to identify, is this discrete or is this continuous? Okay. Again, sorry, I kind of ran out of space there. It says a function connected by a line or curve is a continuous function. Dependent or independent. What does it mean like if you're dependent on your parents for money? What does that mean in context? If you're dependent on someone else for money, what does that mean? Yeah. Yeah, you're relying on them, right? That you rely on that person to give you money, shelter, whatever it is, right? You're dependent on someone else. If you're independent, it doesn't matter about that other person, right? You can do whatever you want. You're independent, right? It's the same thing with variables. Okay, I may give you a situation and ask which is the independent variable and which is the dependent variable. The example I used last class, if I gave you a baby's length, so how long a baby is, versus its age. A baby's length versus its age. Which of those depends on the other? Which of those depends on the other? Yeah, there you go. Yes, technically, right. So as, well, what's going to happen as the age increases? It's going it's to, the baby's going to get longer, right? And there's nothing I can do to stop the age, right? You're going to become one in 365 days. You're going to become two, and then you're going to become three. There's nothing you can do to change the age, age right? The age is going to happen regardless, okay? But the length is going to increase as the age increases. So which of these is dependent on the other? The length is dependent on the age, right? So in this case, we would call this the dependent variable, and we would call this the independent variable, okay? The age is independent. It doesn't matter. You're going to become one, then you're going to become a two, then you're becoming three, and there's nothing you can do to change that, right? The length, though, depends on the age, because as the age goes on, in this case, the length would get longer. It's not always that case where the dependent variable gets bigger. We'll see a situation in a couple minutes where it doesn't, okay? So if, if you're asked to identify the independent or dependent variable, think about which one relies on the other. Does that make sense? All right, now we're going to look at how these look in a graph. 